Hey, what's up guys? JC here, and it's a very exciting day. I apologize if it looks like I just rolled out of bed, because I did. See this? It's a bright and sunny day outside. Here, for me, it's been pouring down rain four days straight, day and night. The plan was to wake up and go fly, but there's so much exciting stuff going on. So, I'm probably going to fly tomorrow. I'll make videos today. In this channel update, I'll be talking about... Beta Flight 3.1 being released, Race Flight 1 project, the FreeSky XM receivers and playlist, the Turnergy Evolution, what's going on with that, some more antenna videos and tests, and on a side note, I bought new tires for my motorcycle because the rain was really depressing me. And I have another date tonight. Alright, so let's get started. Uh, Beta Flight 3.1, well, I should say the uh, 1.8.5 configurator it just released last night. I noticed that before I went to bed. And I was hoping and praying that 3.1 would be released soon, and it, it did about four hours ago in my sleep. So if you click on your Betaflight icon, uh, if you look in the top right of your screen, you should see 1.8.5. This is the new configurator. Expect things to look a little bit different. I'll actually be making another video next. Uh, showing you all the differences, what new features they've added in. Uh, now, if you want 3.1 firmware, make sure you have you check off the box "Show Unstable Releases" because it's still technically a release candidate. Uh, but there's nothing to worry about that. I know it's not the like completely finalized version, uh, but if it if they make it a release candidate, this means that it's like 98 percent done there might be a couple bugs in it but uh, they think that it's good enough to for everyone to use so i recommend going ahead and flashing 3.1 firmware as far as the race flight one project i know like you guys keep asking me about it and because i mentioned it a long time ago and the reason for that is uh, they even said that race flight one would be releasing in a couple weeks and this is at the beginning of december but here we are in January, and it's still not released yet. So I apologize for piquing your interest, making you interested so long ago. I'm just waiting for it to release. Because the thing is, with Betaflight 3.1, anyone can use it. Yeah, you did have to go to a bunch of different websites and download a bunch of stuff just to try it out. But with the Race Flight 1 project, they're a little bit more secretive about it. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I plead the fifth. I'm only talking about Race Flight 1 because they're talking about it but I'm not going to give any more information other than that. Other than it will be really soon, and so far, I really like it. They really are bringing some like new, like new, new stuff to the table I've never even seen before. As far as Eternity Evolution, I told you guys in the last channel update that I bought one, and there would be a whole Eternity playlist and videos on uh, the different receivers that are compatible with it, and this and that. Uh, about a week later, after that video, uh, eBay re refunded my money because they actually didn't have any in stock. And then I looked around. I looked everywhere, on every website. I, I was even on websites in countries where I, I didn't even understand the language. But one thing I did understand was sold out. You couldn't even find any of the receivers. But now they are back in stock as of yesterday. Uh, Hobby King has one for... I want to say like $78, something like that. eBay is selling them for $120, and there's a few other websites. I did get mine from Hobby King. I bought that. It comes with a receiver, and I bought three more receivers. I got all of that for about $100 uh, or $105 plus shipping. Of course, I paid for the expedited shipping because, uh, you know, dealing with Hobby King and it coming from Hong Kong expedited shipping means it should get here pretty quickly I'd say in about uh, two years and honestly like I hate Hobby King with a passion I've had nothing but bad experiences with them so honestly I'm expecting it to get here sometime in 2019 or I do get it and it's broken something doesn't work and they don't refund my money I get it and something is missing from the package like the charger just like they did with my Tyrannus when I bought it from through them, or I just don't get it at all. One of those four things are probably going to happen, so I'm going to keep my hopes up, and we'll find out. 
I have started a brand new uh, receiver playlist, the FreeSky XM. I've actually made the video and uploaded it, I just haven't posted it yet, but I'll post it right now. Uh, but long story short, well this is the video that I have so far is the review for this, a lot more coming. There is a XM and then there is a XM Plus. Uh, long story short, the XM is rated for 400 meters, the XM Plus has two antennas and it's considered a full range receiver, meaning it will get the same range as the XSR, X4 RSB, and many others. These do not have telemetry, which may be a, a, a downside to some guys. Personally, I don't use telemetry. I just use my on-screen display, so I couldn't care less. The XM only costs $10. The XM Plus sells for about $16. Uh, I picked these up off of Banggood, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Just to give you a size comparison, everyone loves the XSR for how small it is. The XM is one quarter of the size. Like I said, no telemetry, but I probably wouldn't use this one for uh, a normal size build, but I am definitely going to be using these on my micro size builds. Uh, I do have to make a video on how to bypass the voltage regulator to be able to power it with 3.3 volts, but that's going to be no problem at all. The XM Plus, I will be buying a lot more of those because it's basically an XSR but half the size and just no telemetry which I don't use anyway. Oh and like I said with the Turn G Evolution I did buy like three different receivers so I'll be uh, do a, doing a comparison on all three of those and uh, as well as a bunch of other videos. As far as the antennas um, sometimes when I'm bored I just sit here and I make uh, random designs with antennas. You guys seem to really like my Cloverleaf antenna video, so I'll be making more antenna videos. Uh, actually, the next one is I'm going to take some of these crazy designs that I've made. Here's just a couple for example. Uh, I'm going to be testing all these back to back to see which one performs the best. You guys have especially been interested in how I made this one. Well, before I show you how to make it, let's do a test to see how it compares to a Cloverleaf. What else? Um, I still have that somewhere around here. I didn't lose it. That $17 F4 flight controller. Uh, I got a review on that coming up. Great thing about that one is uh, it actually uses the CC3D Revo firmware. And Betaflight and Raceflight both support the Revo. That means that uh, you can have a $17 F4 flight controller and the ability to try out both Betaflight and Raceflight to find out which one you like better. That's going to do it guys, so just keep an eye on the posted videos, I will be having a lot coming up soon, um, so thanks for watching and I will see you again soon.